Hey, welcome back to Learning Stuff for Lines. Let's talk about edible plant books. Uh, I really enjoy going out and doing a hike or a mock bug out or something like that and trying to learn and study some of the plants that are around me. I've gotten a lot better over the past couple years, but I think there's a pretty steep learning curve if you're trying to teach yourself. And these books have really helped me out a lot. Um, probably one of the best is going to be this uh, Falcon Guide here. Uh, I've got several books we're going to talk about all of them. Uh, I'm really going to focus on stuff that has to do with Utah specifically because that's where I live, but also just the Rocky Mountains um, because we have a very different set of plants here. A lot of people out east uh, see a lot of our aspens and they think they're uh, like paper birch. Uh, and uh, that there, there is out east that people used to start fires, but it's not the same thing, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, it doesn't seem to work the same. So we've got different plants here in Utah, and a lot of these books really are helpful to learn these. So let's start off with uh, what are some of my requirements for some of these books. First off, I would love to have these books in a digital form uh, because there's, it, a digital form is so much lighter. You know, you just have a smartphone or something like that or a tablet, and you've got, you know, a thousand color books in it or something like that but I like to have the physical copy as well I want to have full color images on here because if you're a beginner and you're you're trying out plants that you've never seen before I it's just too dangerous for for you to just take some kind of uh, black and white image or something like that and uh, to try out a plant or try eating it or something like that I really do like that a lot of these books have the uh, Latin name uh, as well as the uh, common name this Falcon Guide is really nice because it has some uh, allergy warnings and things like that. Uh, it's even got some recipes and stuff as well. Uh, you can see this nice full color image here. I'll take a picture of this for you guys and put it up on screen so you can see nice how, how nice this looks. Um, I do like a book to talk about kind of um, to describe the plant, you know, because you can see what it looks like in this picture, but you don't have much of a sense of scale sometimes. So that really helps out a lot. Uh, I've seen these sunflowers all over the place in Utah, just growing on the side of the highway. They just they just grow wild out there, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, this is alfalfa. Alfalfa is really cool, actually, because this grows a lot in the city, uh, and I do live in a city and urban area. And this stuff grows all over the place if people don't manage their lawn very well here in Utah. So this stuff is just edible. It just grows in people's backyards. It grows out wild as well. Uh, but I do find it a lot more in the city. This book's also got this uh, scouring rush. Uh, this A lot of people call this like horsetail or something like that. This grows all over the place in Utah. is next to like a stream, uh, kind of a bit more shaded uh, and with a nice stream. This stuff is awesome. Uh, I've actually used this a lot to clean pots and things like that. It works really, really well, actually, because this has silica in it, and it will act as an abrasive and scrape up your pot. Uh, not enough to damage it, obviously. It's just like kind of like sand or something like that. Scrapes it up and cleans your pot really well. One problem with uh, these books is pretty much all of them tell you something different. So probably my second favorite book is going to be this Woody Plants of Utah. The name is a little bit misleading. Uh, to me, as a beginner, woody plants to me sounds like a tree. But this has a huge amount of plants in it. And the best part about this is this focus is specifically on the state of Utah. And so it's going to show the locations of the plants. So we've got uh, this gambrel oak. This stuff grows all over the place in Utah. You've probably seen it just growing on the sides of the highway and things like that, up on uh, uh, hills and things in between mountains. And this is really nice because it gives you kind of an, an idea of where the plant grows. So you can look at this gambrel oak, and then to a beginner, this Harvard oak here over here is going to look the sim the, the the same. Sorry, and but this guy right here shows you that it grows down here. So if you're in central Utah, which is where I live in the central part of Utah here, I can see oh you know what this one grows over here, this one doesn't. So if you can get a book that's got a map on it and shows the location of the plants. It's extremely helpful. Um, out east it might not help so much because uh, the land is going to be a little bit flatter and a bit more consistent. Uh, in Utah we go from salt flats over to some more greener areas to red rock and, and, and it's, it's a huge uh, temperature and environment change. This is another one that I really like. This one focuses uh, more than the state of Utah, this focuses on a large uh, portion of the West Coast area. Uh, and this talks about, like, uh, really is kind of focusing more 
on here. But it shows that this, these plants in this book go all over the place in the U.S. All right, so we've got some horsetail in this other book here. This is the Edible Medicinal Plants. This one focuses a little bit different. Uh, this one uh, is focusing on eating. And uh, it mentions some medicinal uses and stuff sometimes, but this one really focuses, uh, has a large sections about, about medicinal use. So we can just talk about uh, horsetail. Let me just read this edibility. The roots are edible, as are the young fertile shoots when peeled and cooked. The young green shoots of all species are edible when thoroughly boiled, but should be consumed only in small quantities. And the warning is the high silica content. That's what I mentioned. It's got silica in there, and that stuff is an abrasive. So you don't want to eat a whole bunch of this because it's going to grind down your teeth. But this also has the medicinal uses, which is really important. Let me get a little bit better of a close-up there for you guys. Horse silk contains a considerable amount of calcium and other constituents believed to be collectively useful in healing of bone fractures and connective tissue injuries. The plant contains silica, an abrasive compound that makes horsetail an excellent pot scrubber. Really, I've used it for that. It is fantastic. Cleansing hair, rinse, or facial scrub. You guys can uh, read the rest of that if you feel like. But this stuff grows all over the place in Utah and is definitely some plant that I really pay attention for, for uh, cleaning up my pots and things like that. We have the prickly pear cactus as well. This one also has its medicinal uses and things listed. This is a fantastic book. It doesn't have the maps, but the images are really nice. Um, I do find cactuses to be a bit confusing sometimes because sometimes they just look like another cactus at least to a beginner. So having a book that can describe it a little bit and having some different photos and stuff really helps. Okay, let's hop over to this Woody Plants of Utah. This guy has got lots of cactus and stuff listed as well. But this one goes even into more detail. Like uh, this book just talked about prickly pear, but this one has several different kind of species listed. Beaver tail prickly pear, brittle prickly pear, plains prickly pear, brown spine prickly pear. Lots of different prickly pears. And uh, this also is really nice because it provides a nice map for you. So this, these ones grow a lot further south uh, than where I tend to go. But uh, this more uh, prickly pear here, this brittle prickly pear, that's about more this kind of area where I like to go do my mock bug outs and things like that. This book is fantastic if you live in Utah. Uh, this is a pretty pricey book. I think it was like 40 bucks or something like that. I'll have to put the price up on for you guys. But... Uh, I'm not sure if there's a digital version of this, but I think this book is fantastic specifically because of the maps. Usually I'll bring this book and then maybe uh, one of these two because uh, this one has a bit more uh, uh, detail about each specific uh, plant. This one is just so, so broad and has so many different things that it can get. Uh, it won't have as many uh, listings of like edibility or medicinal uses because this is talking more about the plants. This one, you know, is talking more about the edible nature of the plant. I did a review on this other book here, the uh, Bushcraft Field Guide to Trapping, Gathering, and Cooking in the Wild. This one has a couple plants that it lists here. Uh, nice and simple ones, easy to recognize. Clover, cattail, uh, plantain, uh, wild onion, dandelion, raspberries. Uh, these are the ones that I found myself uh, pretty cool. This burdock here, I've seen this stuff all over the place. Absolutely drives me nuts. Um, and this ac these acorns will grow on those gambrel oaks that I mentioned before. Uh, supposedly, I, I've, I've seen the, the acorn shells, but I haven't really gotten any acorns myself. This Peterson Field Guide here, Western Medicinal Plants and Herbs. This is also another one that's pretty broad uh, for the area that it applies to, but this also provides different opinions on what plants can do and what they're used for. This is a medicinal plants and herbs one, so it does talk about the medicinal uses and uh, the edibility of it as well, which is really important. We can see uh, the listing in here of alfalfa. So I've got this tag over the uh, other plant here. More information about this alfalfa. Now, a lot of these books will list uh, a huge swath of different treatments. Like it'll just be like cancer and bowel issues and all over the place. Like uh, let's read off this plantain here. Traditionally, alfalfa is considered an appetite stimulant, mineral rich and diuretic, and is said to protect against urinary tract, cardiovascular, intestinal problems with regular use. Not going to pronounce that. Indians held heated leaves near the ear to treat earache. Other Indians used leaves as a bed bug repellent in South Africa. Alfalfa tea is used to prevent diabetes. This even talks about how it, uh, it helps with cancers, heart disease, and other ailments. I mean, 
Uh, this just, a lot of these books will talk about all this stuff, and I, being a beginner, haven't uh, confirmed any of those things. I mean, I don't have cancer to test it on myself. Um, but, personally, I'm a bit uh, skeptical of all of these cures that all of these books list that they do. Uh, a lot of, I mean, a lot of them will list what Indians did with them, and I don't know how scientific that information is, but I think a lot of people do get a lot of use out of these medicinal plants and really do find benefit in them. But I would want to confirm it myself before I would even uh, suggest something like that. If I had to pick uh, a, a starter book, it would probably be this Edible and Medicinal Plants of the West. I think this would be really good uh, for anybody out here in the Rockies because this has a nice wide range of plants. Uh, it even talks about uh, some poisonous plants in the back like this water hemlock. Stinging nettle, this stuff is everywhere, but it's actually edible. You just got to be careful uh, with how you prepare it. So you've got this death canvas here. I actually found this one time. Uh, it talks about how um, it can accidentally be identified as onion or something to some beginner. But to me, it was very obvious that it was not onion. I mean, I just broke off a piece of it and smelled it, and it was very obvious it didn't smell remotely like onion so I knew that this wasn't onion when I saw it and I looked through my book and I had this with me and lo and behold it was death canvas that was pretty cool actually yeah this guy lists yarrow this is probably one of uh, the best medicinal uh, plants I've actually used this as a bug repellent I found it actually to be pretty good I went on a uh, scout camp trip up to Camp Bartlett and I forgot to bring some bug spray with me but this stuff was growing everywhere and yarrow is really easy to recognize because it has uh, its you know leaf here is tons of tiny little leaves coming off in these these white flowers that kind of I mean I guess you could mistake it for hemlock or something like that but it's really obvious to me because of these leaves here and I just took those grabbed the uh, biggest uh, wettest leaves from like growing right next to a little stream and would just rub that all over my skin and it actually really helped a lot I was really impressed by this yarrow something I learned in this book, something I've learned by watching a lot of different YouTube videos. So this would probably be the book I would recommend to start with. And then after that, if you live in Utah, I would recommend this Woody Plants of Utah because it has the specific locations that the plants grow, right? I mean, you're sort of looking at this guy and guess what? It grows in one spot, right? So you, you, you know more of what you're looking at because as a beginner, you can get kind of confused, but having a map and you can just see a pattern of where it grows really helps you identify it as a beginner. So these two books I think are fantastic. The Foraging the Rocky Mountains, I think this is the one I started with. This one is also really good. Definitely focuses on beginners and things like that. Uh, I mean, you can see that this is useful for beginners because it provides you a nice little ruler on the side here. So you can measure things. A lot of these books will do that, which is really useful because they'll describe, oh, you know, the leaf is this big and you're kind of eyeballing it, trying to figure out if it's one species or the other. And you've got a nice little ruler that you can use to figure out how big it is. This one for its size is probably the most dense uh, with information. Uh, but the problem with that is, is you have a hard time finding anything you're looking for. Here we got mullein here. This is some awesome stuff. Uh, I find this everywhere in Utah, uh, usually in a bit of a drier area, um, but it'll grow in kind of more moist areas too. That's just from my own experience. Supposedly this makes really good toilet paper if you use the, uh, the flower stem here, but I've never, I've never tested that out myself. I plan on testing that out hopefully this spring or something. Hoping to do a mock bug out within the next couple weeks. I know this has been kind of jumping around quite a lot, um, but I found these books to be really helpful to me as a beginner. Uh, I've really ex expanded my knowledge using these books. I'll just bring, you know, two of these books out and run around and uh, take pictures and try to remember what plants are and to experiment with them. All right, hopefully this helps anybody out through my fellow Utahns. Hopefully you guys can uh, look at these books and learn more about the plants around you. Anybody else in the Rockies, I think all of these books would still be very helpful to you. Uh, I mean, these, even this Utah one, uh, the plants will grow outside of Utah, but the, the map in the maps in there is extremely useful. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Happy hiking and stay safe. If you ever try out any of these plants, uh, make sure you really understand what you're doing. I'm just an amateur teaching myself using these books and videos that I see online and stuff like that. I take it nice and slow. Make sure I don't eat a whole bunch of something and get sick or something like that. Just do it nice and slow. Make sure you know what you're doing. Talk to a professional if you're unsure. 
Thanks for watching.